All right, if you have your Bibles then, we ask you to turn to the Gospel of John chapter 4. John chapter 4. And we're going to uh, begin reading in the first verse. John chapter 4, uh, beginning in the very first verse. The Bible says this, When therefore the Lord knew how the, ver how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. He left Judea and departed again into Galilee, and he said, and he, and he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the parcel ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weary with his journey, set us on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh the woman of Samaria to draw water, and Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for an opportunity to be in your house tonight. Lord, God, we pray that you would allow us to uh, set every idle thought away, Lord, that we might focus in on you tonight, Lord, that you might be lifted up, that you bless our church, Lord God, we uh, pray that we would understand and know uh, that the Samaritan woman came there uh, with a great need and she left there full. God, help us as a people to desire to be full and to be uh, useful in the things that you would have us to do, Lord, and we pray these things in the name of Jesus, amen. All right, very familiar verses of Scripture, the, uh, the woman at the well, as many uh, call it. And what it really is, is a, a true picture of salvation. Uh, you know, we have, we have minimalized salvation so much in the modern day, it comes down uh, uh, to many times, and you know, I, I was just having a discussion with this somebody the other day, you know, we get so hung up on baptismal regeneration, and we're like, blah, 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 you know, and we can list all the reasons why that's not right. Well, listen, just as, just as much as a heresy as baptismal regeneration is, is thinking you can do it yourself. Um, you know what? Uh, I think the most damnable heresy out of hell is that you have a choice. Um, that, that's what they all other hinge on. All the other false doctrines has put it into our mind that we're in control of our destiny and, and, and not our God ourselves. But we'll, we'll notice some things from this. Now, I want you to see, first of all, that the Lord Jesus' reputation was getting out there. He was beginning to be popular. He had exceeded the numbers that John the Baptist had had prepared, and now uh, the Pharisees were starting to take notice of him. Now, when, uh, you know, as long as this little church is struggling along, along around here and nobody, but you, you see some things begin to happen, you're going to get people's attention. See, that's why the devil likes to keep us down next to nothing is because he, uh, he, he don't want the Lord Jesus to get the attention. So once Jesus' ministry grew, to the point that he began to have some uh, notoriety, if you will, whether it was sincere or not, then they began to take note of him. Now, I want you to see the, the first thing he says in verse 4 that I think is noteworthy, I must needs go through Samaria. Now, see, Jesus had a plan, and Jesus always has a plan, and the Lord God of heaven always has a plan, and the Holy Ghost always has a plan, and it preempts everything we do. See, his plan, he says, I've got to go over to Samaria. Now, he could have said easily, there's a harlot woman over there that I'm going to, uh, I'm going to save today. She needs an intervention of grace, and I'm going to accomplish it. But all he let his disciples know is I need to go over that way. Yeah. See, that's the way the Lord works, and he still, he still works the exact same way. He, he does it, and, and, we, and we look back, and we gain the benefit, and we can give him praise and great glory for it, but he's the one that has always accomplished the work. Then uh, in verse 7, he, has, he begins the interaction with the woman, and there comes the woman of Samaria to draw water, and Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. Now, I want you to see, and I would say, uh, 
this concerning uh, Lydia, whose heart the Lord opened. That woman wasn't looking for anything but a cold glass of water. She wasn't interested in Christ. She wasn't interested in her eternal destiny. You know, you know, uh, even the, the rich blessing of thinking, hey, what comes after this? That comes from God. That don't come from man. You know what man is worried about? What's the next thing he can put in his mouth? And that's about as far as his thoughts get. Now, that, and, and so we find then uh, that this woman, she had no interest in the things of God. She had no interest in what was uh, laid out before her. What she wanted was her water bucket full and go back down to the house. End of story. Verse 8, for his disciples were gone away to the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of, uh, then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it thou being a Jew askest drink of me? which am a woman of Samaria. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. And, and, and you know, I've heard a lot of uh, discussion, but uh, a discussion on that verse, but what really it is, is leave me alone. Uh, you get your water, I'll get my water, you leave me alone. See, without the intervention of grace, that's every one of our attitudes toward Jesus. Uh, you know, sometimes I stand amazed and, and, and seemingly the Lord will be in the presence of a service and the Lord dealing with people and other people just stand there, uh, you know, like a cow looking at a newborn door not understanding. Well, that is the difference. They don't understand. They do not know what you're talking about. They do not understand it because that comes from God and not from man. And so that this woman, as she's standing there, she was more or less kind of getting smart with him. Leave me alone. Uh, I want to get back to the house. You know, have you ever thought about how much you contribute every day to the cause of Christ? And how many times you really in the back of your mind say, leave me alone. I want to get back to the house. Uh, I, I'm afraid that many times that's most of us. We're, we're not contributing much of ourselves to the things of Christ uh, nearly as we should be. Uh, verse 9, uh, I mean verse 10, excuse me. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God. Now the very first thing that he makes her aware of is he's turning the conversation to spiritual things. If thou knewest the gift of God. Now that in itself is a great, great blessing. Amen. Most people will pass this life through 80, 85 years and leave here without a clue. Right. The only thing that's out there, the gift of God, is eternal life. Mm -hmm. that's, that, that, and if you come and pass this way and even live 100 years, the, the summation of the same thing will be done at the end of the day. That's all that matters. He says, if thou knewest. So we have to say that the Samaritan woman can't be over there by herself. We are born in ignorant people. We are spiritually ignorant. We have no awareness of what's around us. Now, uh, when you're ignorant, it doesn't mean you're stupid. Stupid means you can't learn. Ignorant means you don't know it. You haven't been taught it. See, we as an ignorant people, if, if, if Christ don't teach it through the Holy Ghost to your spirit, you'll never get it. Uh, you have to have you have him come by and and show you the things of God, and that's exactly how uh, that's exactly what he was saying. If thou knewest the gift of God, so that was one thing she needed to know what the gift was, and who it is that saith to thee, "Give me the drink." So she needed to know uh, she needed to know two things, and the first one was what the gift was, the what and the who. So I ask you tonight, do you know the what? and the who. See, the what is this. This life is going on somewhere. If you go home to be with the Lord Jesus Christ and set at his feet throughout the ceaseless ages, or if you split hell wide open, the what is this. This is eternal. This inward man never dies. He never goes away. He's always there. He always has been there, always will be there. And listen, when this life ends, it's going to be somewhere. That is the reality of it. And that, that's the attention that we have to give it. Then the, the uh, other thing is the who, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know him tonight? Do you, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? See, uh, 
that's uh, that all that logical theology will get you in the way because you know what uh, what a lot of that becomes is nothing more than learning things like algebra and history but knowing somebody and knowing things is a totally different thing don't you think it's two totally different entities. And, and so we find that um, uh, that he, 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 he says, you got you to know both. You need, you need to know both things, me and who. And then she says, um, and in the rest of the verse 10, thou wouldest have asked of him, and, thou wouldest get, and he would have given thee living water. So, so if you know me, if you knew who I am, you would ask for this. Now notice what she doesn't do. The woman saith unto her, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. The well is deep. And whence hast thou the living, the living water? Now I want you to see that the next thing he says, if thou knewest. She still stood in ignorance. And, and, and she answered him back and said, you don't need anything to draw with. This well is deep. And you don't need anything to draw with. You can't get it. But notice what he said. He says, "If thou knew, if thou knewest who it was you were talking to," and you know, very, very frequently, <laughs> that is the problem. Have you ever presented the gospel to somebody and they just stand there and look at you? Yeah. That's not who they are. Well, why? Because you know what? Just as ignorant as the Samaritan woman is that person looking at you, and he's and, and so the reason she didn't react and. Uh, uh, respond maybe the way that they thought she should have is because yes she didn't even know the person of Christ verse uh, 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 13 and Jesus answered and said unto her whosoever drinketh of this water meaning the, the well there shall thirst again but whosoever drinketh the water that I shall give him shall never thirst but the water that I shall give him Shall be, shall be in him a well of water springing up to everlasting life. So I want you to notice two things. First of all, she says, uh, he says, uh, this well here is inadequate. If you get it, you put your bucket down in there, you'll be back up here in the morning once more. See, we need to begin to understand and know that religion is really inadequate, isn't it? Religion is an inadequate thing. It, it, you know what? It really hasn't helped since the day of Cain and Abel, has it? That was the first attempt at, at false religion, was it not? Was uh, uh, with Cain. And it's always been inadequate. He says, listen, if you come back up here and this is what you're depending on, if this worldly stuff is what you're interested in, you're going to be thirsty again tomorrow. And you're going to have to come back and come back. But he says, I am the living water. I'm the experiential water. I am the one that, uh, that, that continues on and on and on. Verse 15. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Now, in verse 15, it seems like she's starting to get it. But I don't think she is. And the reason why is people can talk a good talk. Listen, I, I, I truly don't, and I don't, nobody else in this building can say it either. I don't even remember the first time I heard the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I really don't. I mean, I'm assuming it's when I was a baby on my mama's lap. And you know what? I can talk a good talk. I, I did it well when I was uh, eight years old. I had people deceived before four years. You see, it, it, it's very easy to do. And remember, she is a half Jew, so she knows a little something. And so she could, she could, uh, she she could get by. And she said, "You know what? I believe deep within her heart, she's like, okay, uh, I'll, I'll go through this little rigmarole with him, and he'll go, and I'll give him a little water, and he'll be going that way, and I'll be going that way." End of story. I believe that she faced religion and said, oh, I know what he's getting at now. And you know, every day we see that time and time again. Oh, oh yeah, I'm a saved person. Listen, you go through, you go through Stewart County, you can't find a lost person. Everybody you meet. And you know what? I believe they're about like where this woman was. They know about it, but they don't know it. They, they know just enough, as old saying goes, just enough to be dangerous. And, and so we see then, 
that this woman had no knowledge of God. She knew about God. She knew she knew uh, the things about Jehovah God, but she did not know him at all. And so she makes this broad statement to him, verse 16. And Jesus saith unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. Now, see, now she's down to the point of sin and self. Uh, you got to see God. You got to see what Christ is. You got to see who He is. But before you can ever really see that, you got to see yourself. Mm. See, she was looking into religion, even you know if she was from the other side of the house, so to speak. But she never looked at herself. And you know what? I find a lot of people today that just don't look at self. They they go through a routine. They go through, uh, you know, uh, but they never say, you know what? I really am inadequate. I really can't do this on my own. There's nothing noteworthy about me. There's nothing I can say I have done. Nothing. And you know, it's a fearful thing to look around and say, you know what? <laughs> I'm a sinner. Uh, I'm hopeless. I'm helpless. Uh, I'm as good as already there. That's a very, very difficult thing to get this flesh mind around and to say, I need help. I, I, I'm inadequate. I don't have anything. I, I'm not genuine. I'm not real. And that's what she was coming to, down to. And notice what he says. He doesn't, he doesn't say that in her face. He just, he, he just gives her a direction. Okay, if you're ready, get your husband. You know, that's, that's pretty humbling, isn't it? What that says to me is he knows exactly what's going on right up here. And looking back uh, 52 years, he knows all that junk back there too, don't he? Pretty humbling, isn't it? So the amazing thing that Christ did with one question brought her, brought her who she was right out before Christ. And you know, the uh, very same thing with us uh, is just one speaking of the things of Christ, it, it will bring us to the forefront and bring us exactly where we're at before him. Now notice what she says, she's still not relative, ready to acknowledge her position and acknowledge truth. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said unto her, thou hast well said, I have no husband. Thou hast had five husbands. And he whom thou hast is not and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband, and that thou, thou saidest thou truly. Now, uh, you know, she was interested in the law. She was interested in saying, hey, I'm, I'm half Jew already. I'm, I'm good to go. And so he brings up uh, one of the behavioral commandments, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not commit adultery. And he makes it real level right there before her. And says, you're right. You got five of them. Counted every marriage she'd ever been involved in. Counted every husband. Held them responsible. Held her responsible. And you know what? That's what the law does before us. Despite what we think, we're still contractically uh, involved in the law. Until he saves us, until grace puts the law away, we're still involved in that mess. He says, you are a sinner. You are hopeless. You are helpless. Don't give me your religion. Don't give me what you think is right. Don't you be honest. You know, the, the most difficult thing you will ever do is be honest with yourself and take sides against yourself with Christ. That, that, that's the most difficult thing you will ever do. And that's exactly where she was uh, getting down to. Verse 19. Still doesn't acknowledge sin. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive thou art a, pro uh, a prophet. Notice exactly what she goes back to. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. And ye say, meaning that he was a Jew, that uh, in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Now notice what she says. She says, yeah, you're a prophet, but me and you are still different. You go that way, I'll go this way. 
You say, I, I, I think we're supposed to be worshiping up here. You say it's down there in Jerusalem. We're not the same. We're different. We're, we're against each other. We don't like each other. Do you ever find in here where she, he invites, say, let me come into your heart? Do you ever find in here where she's guided to say any kind of prayer? Do you ever find, no, it, it's just not there. And the reason why, because see, regeneration is a work of God, not a man. It, it, it doesn't, uh, uh, man's not involved in this thing, so I want you to see nowhere, anywhere along the way is she expressing an interest in becoming a Christian. Verse 21, Then Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh, when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship, you know not what. You worship, you know not what. In other words, no no, uh, no intimate relationship with the person of God. You worship what you know not what. You know what you, we know that we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, I want you to see in verse 24, you got to worship him in spirit and truth, and in truth. Now, the truth is this, as we stand in desperate need of a Savior. The truth is this, on a daily basis, we need the Holy Ghost to come by and say, hey, it's, it's going to be all right. Things are going well. This is under my control. Uh, we, we need ongoing encouragement every day, do we not? We need help in that. And, do, uh, we, uh, and, and so uh, as we look at this experience with the Samaritan woman, he says what you really need is the truth. The truth I give you tonight is this. You need to be born again. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you must. Verse 25, the woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. So even those half-breeds were looking for Jesus. And Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Now, I want you to see at the end of this, uh, this little excerpt, he says, it's me. He revealed himself. Uh, remember, uh, remember all those times in the scripture uh, when remember when Mary Magdalene came up to the sepulchre. Remember, it was Mary's sister, and he just went Mary. And immediately she knew. She turned out to a master. And, and the the two men on the road to Emmaus, he said, "Did our not hearts burn within us?" See, if we don't have something comparative to that. All right. We're probably not really got what we think we do, do we? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's good to be a Baptist, ain't it? But it's a whole lot better to be born again, is it? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't want to head out of this place with just some sound theology. I want to know Christ. I want to know Him you know, in an intimate and personal way. Because listen, at the end of the day, <laughs> that's the only thing it is, is it not? If we believe, if I believe the Bible, what I think it teaches, it says I have placed some in the church. That's in the authorship of God. So salvation is what I'm worried about. That, that, that's what I, I, that's my main, my main concern is do I know Christ? And so time and time again, I tell you and I remind you and I give it a, one more time tonight. Make the calling and election sure. And personally believe that uh, we'll meet this Samaritan woman one day and uh, uh, it will be very interesting to see if we understand people like I think we will. <laughs> These people that we have recorded of their salvation, exactly how they'll still be praising after two to three thousand years.